that's a bit through the anthology department. Uh, and, you know, my colleague said to me, when I asked the question, how long have we got? <coughs> he said three to five. I said, I'll see you in ten. I intend to stay in this council chamber for the ten years. I intend to fight this disease. I intend to continue to get the treatments I'm guessing from the NHS. And yes, there will be some people who don't get treated perhaps as well as I did. But believe me, the NHS is doing a marvellous job. And just one final point, Madam Mayor, perhaps I should have declared this at the outset, declared this because my sister is a, is a sister in the uh, HD unit, HD unit at part, part time. And she's been a nurse now for 35 years. And she has nothing but praise for the NHS. She doesn't hear or see the stories that are being related tonight. And I'm sure that they do happen, but not to the degree that you guys believe they happen. The NHS is working well. Yes, it will always need more money. Yes, it will always need more doctors. It will always need more doctors. But believe me, it's not dying. It's going to be going to change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
going towards the NHS, which hopefully will help. However, as a proportion of GDP, apart from 2009, as Mike says, um, spending on the NHS has been higher than every other year of the Labour government. Spending currently is higher than every other year. There's only one year that you spend more than we're spending now, in real terms, as a proportion of GDP. So, so that argument is just a fallacy. The Labour Party are currently trying to convince the public that they're more like those nice Scandinavians with their big blue jumpers and great TV, rather than those dangerous Venezuelans with hospitals with no doctors and no drugs. If only we had that nice Nordic socialism, Britain would become a beautiful, wonderful socialist utopia. While the Norwegians, Finnish, and Icelanders all spend less as a percentage of GDP than the UK does on healthcare, so perhaps we should take some. Uh, so I'll assume the amount we do currently spend on taxes to make money. So hopefully, Madam Mayor, we can put this aside and continue to work as a, together as a local representative to stand up for local services, irrespective of what colour rose out we all choose to wear.
<laughs> but I didn't because it's a lie, because I've been treated by a doctor in that, in that uh, hotel I was so Not recently, but I have been treated in the past. The gentleman has been brought in to do this plunger and bring everything down, only been here since me, so he doesn't know what's going on before. He doesn't realise the struggles that we've had and the southern part of the peninsula in getting health care. So I, the argument that we put forward to get this place open in the first place, on the Monday, many of the doctor's surgeries in Eastern and Bromba South, there were queues of up to 50, maybe 60 people waiting to get seen by doctors. The surgery opened and the out of hours did an absolutely fantastic job. We've heard trust, and I think it's said it once before, trust. We need to trust them, they need to trust us and make sure that everything's done properly. I'm very concerned because when I was outside there today, I noticed the sign for the out of hours was ripped off the wall. But I can't see them coming back anytime soon. We need to put as much pressure as we can. We can open them. Like Chris, I would say, the treatment I've had at Platinum Oncology was just absolutely superb. I'm still through going through the process, but um, life has not just over here. But <laughs> outside of that, we've been absolutely brilliant. The one thing that did, we did point out to those people uh, when we were talking to the CCG about removing that facility. I'll be as very quickly as I can, by the way. From removing that facility from Eastern, they were arguing that it was ambulances that were blocking it and needed to clear the place. By taking away Eastern, we get more ambulances and we get less. But last of all, the one thing I wanted to mention was in relation to finances. Uh, we can all argue in the we want how much money is going into the NHS. Whose problem it is, who it isn't. Big slice of the money that goes into the NES doesn't get spent on the NHS. It goes to the PFI. Thank you. Thank you. in favour 17, votes against 41, abstentions 1, that motion, that amendment is lost. Thank you. So we're now going to vote on the original motion uh, moved by Council McLaughlin. If all those in favour, please share.
41, votes yay 17, abstentions 1. The original motion is carried. Thank you.
Do young people who leave the care of rural council deserve the best that we can possibly give them? They're vulnerable, they're setting out on life without many of the supports their peers may have. So, Madam Mayor, removing council tax from them for those first vital years is the least we can do. And Madam Mayor, I'm glad that our initiative putting forward this motion has got real and lasting change for some of our most vulnerable residents. I so do. Recovery. But the, the, the issue I actually wanted to mention 
uh, is, is, is on, on the on the to is the crisis we have in our social care system at the moment, uh, which is contributing to this issue. Um, Counter kind of for children's services will, will I'm sure, uh, um, say a bit, this a bit more when she seconds this motion. But we have um, the figures have just gone through the roof in terms of extra demand now on our services. Um, 5% increase in children assessed as being in need, 29% increase in children on child protection plans, 10% increase in children in need. Three out of four uh, local authorities overspending on children's services because they don't have enough money in their budget from the government to deal with this problem. We are facing a crisis in social care and it's brought about this whole issue, again, go back to Mike Sullivan's very eloquent speech before, it's brought about, us, about austerity. As a result of austerity, families are increasingly under stress. And when will you, when will the party up, when will the Conservatives not understand that this is storing up huge problems for the future for our young people? And I would just appeal to them to put pressure on their governments to reverse austerity and let's put, put more funding into public services. Because for me, I've said this on many occasions, Madam Mayor, that is the sign of a civilised society. And I really do, in finishing, I really do hope that you will support our plea and, uh, that the cabinet member has been um, talking about this a lot today. You know, Philip Hammond needs to put some more money into the budget next week, into the autumn statement, urgently to deal with this problem. Because I really feel for the future, fear for the future if he doesn't. So I'm happy to second the amendment. Um,
apprenticeship levy, because the apprenticeship levy is, the, is designed to take money away from the council. We are losing a half a million pounds per year because the system that's been put in place by the Tory government makes it impossible because of austerity for our council to actually use that money to support apprenticeships. You will recognise that people coming out of education without qualifications or without training who haven't quite reached the level two, we've got a fair journey to make to employment. The government's uh, proposal for that is a traineeship scheme. A traineeship scheme where, where, the, where the people who enter into that traineeship scheme, the very people that many are talking about, 16 to 18 year olds, uh, who haven't quite reached a level two of attainment, are put into a traineeship ship scheme without any wages, without any funding, with a training provider is, is, has, the, has the money or has the funding from the government and is not allowed to spend that money on wages for these young people to get themselves ready for a level two apprenticeship. And it's exactly the same as what Phil was talking about with this apprenticeship levy. It's badly thought out, it's badly organised, we need to do something about it. We ask the Tories on the council, we ask the Tories in government to re-look at the apprenticeship levy and do something that actually helps our people get into employment and gives them a way to while they're trying to do it.
to lobby the government to change some of their views on what's happening around children coming into care. It's austerity policies that's causing it. When it's austerity policies from us having to cut back on services that we don't have to provide because we haven't got enough money such as, such as the statutory stuff. So whether it's that or whether it's the policies where families are going into crisis, whether it's because of universal credit or whether it's because of anything else that's happening, we need to, to have a serious look at some of the policies and some of, some of the effects it's having. And the, 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 the most criminal thing out of all of this is the people who are suffering are the poorest people in society. It's, a, it's, it's the poorest communities that are suffering, 10 times more than anyone else. And how they can't protect themselves. That's what we're here to do. And if we can't provide them with some sort of protection and stand up for them, and stand up for their rights, I don't know who can. So please support this. I'm glad you let so We've been working on this for weeks. I'm glad you're really sorry. So please, please support us. And please support us, whether it's weeks or whether it's months. In a debate like this, that doesn't matter. In a debate like this, that doesn't matter. This is crucial. This is real, real people's lives, children's lives. So please support it. Thank you very much.